Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to take you on a journey back in time, to explore the discovery of Electron. So, let's start with a quick history. In 1895, British physicist Sir William Crookes, performed experiments in a glass tube, named as Crookes experiment. Let's see, how Crookes performed this experiment. Let me explain, Crookes cathode ray experiment. He took a glass tube, filled with gas and sealed at both ends, is known as a cathode ray tube. There is a side tube with a vacuum pump attached to it. The pump reduces the discharge tube pressure up to 10 power negative 4 atmospheres. It is constructed of two metal plates, which serve as electrodes, connected by a high voltage wire to a battery. The cathode is a negatively charged electrode, that is attached to the battery's negative terminal. The anode is a positively charged electrode, that is attached to the positive terminal of battery. When high voltage current was passed through the gas, shiny rays were emitted from the cathode, which traveled towards the anode. These rays were given the name of, cathode rays, because these originated from the cathode. In 1897, Joseph John Thomson identified cathode rays as negatively charged particles, which were later named electrons. The cathode rays were studied, by many scientists, and their properties were determined. Let me explain some of these properties. Cathode rays cast a shadow. When opaque objects are placed in their path, this proves that they travel in a straight line, perpendicular to the surface of cathode. So, cathode rays travels in a straight line. J. J. Thomson placed a magnet, near the path of the cathode ray, and observed that, it got deflected towards the positive plate. This observation led him to conclude that the particles of cathode rays are negatively charged. Another observation made by cathode ray experiments. When a light paddle wheel is placed in the path of cathode rays, the blades of the paddle wheel begin to rotate. It shows that cathode rays consist of material particles having mass and velocity. Thomson didn't stop there. He also measured the ratio of charge to mass of these particles. He found that, the charge to mass ratio value remained the same, no matter which gas was used in the discharge tube. He concluded that all atoms contained the same types of electrons. Later, George Johnston Stoney, named these particles as electrons. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please, consider subscribing to our channel for, more content like this.